Hello folks and welcome back to Ruthless Metal and in today's video we're going to talk about the 10 reasons why metal died in the 90s but before we get into today's topic I want to remind you guys to smash that like button so that this video can be recommended to others and subscribe to the channel if you haven't so let's talk about today's topic then which is why metal died in the 90s and now you might think, hey, metal didn't die in the 90s, black and death metal was quite popular back then. And the European power metal scene was quite strong towards the end of the decade. But overall I think that we saw a huge decline that started in around 91 or 92. And it continued until the very end of the 90s. And during this period metal almost completely disappeared especially thrash and traditional heavy metal suffered during this time period. So in today's video we're going to explore why this happened. And these 10 reasons aren't in any particular order. And the first reason why metal died in the 90s was hair metal. Hair, glam or pop metal, call it what you will, but bands like Poison, Rat, Cinderella and Motley Crue were very successful during the late 80s and early 90s. So there was something of a duality between those who were more into the heavier side of music and those who were more into the more superficial stuff like fame, parties and getting laid. And it was quite clear that the mass media was more interested in the hair metal bands compared to Maiden, Priest and Sabbath for example. And the second reason why metal died in the 90s was grunge. And it more or less kicked off in 91 with Nirvana's Nevermind that featured hit songs like Smells Like Teen Spirit and Come As You Are. And the album sold 30 million copies and became one of the best selling records of all time. But let's not forget about the other three Seattle bands, Alice in Chains, Pearl Jam and Soundgarden, that all were very successful during the early 90s. But grunge was a short-lived style and it slowly faded away after Kurt Cobain's death in 94. And the third reason why metal died in the 90s was MTV. MTV killed heavy metal music. And MTV popularized the music video in the late 80s and early 90s. And if you were playing in a band during that time and you wanted to create a hit song, then you needed to record a music video, so this was a game changer. The bands now needed to have a certain aesthetic and more pop influenced songs to reach the masses. But let's not forget that MTV also had the show Headbangers Ball that played metal videos, at least in the beginning of the lifespan of the show, but towards the end of the show it focused more on hair metal and grunge. And we can't forget about the animated metalheads Beavis and Butthead, that often commented on metal videos. But MTV lost interest in metal when new trends started outselling the metal bands. So that's why MTV was one of the main reasons why metal died in the early 90s. And the fourth reason why metal died in the 90s was the labels. And labels need to make money in order to keep their business going. So the labels quickly shifted focus and started to put more pressure on their signed bands to slow down and adapt to the new trends. And other labels just dropped the bands and signed new ones. And in retrospect I think that most bands blame their label, but I guess it was a two way street here. The bands wanted to play something new and exciting and the labels wanted to make more cash. And most metal bands during this era tweaked their sound so that they could attract more mainstream audiences. And the fifth reason why metal died in the 90s was the Black Album. In August of 1991 Metallica released their self-titled album that became known as the Black Album. And this record was a huge success and it sold over 16 million copies in the United States alone. And Metallica started to go in another direction with this record. They started writing softer ballads and slower, more mainstream sounding music, with songs like The Unforgiven, Enter Sandman and Nothing Else Matters. And since this record was a huge international success, it influenced other bands to go in the same direction. Just take Megadeth for example. They released Countdown to Extinction and Euthanasia in the early 90s. And both albums was a step away from their thrash metal beginnings. 
And the sixth reason why metal died in the 90s was the metal magazines. Metal Hammer and Kerrang! were big in the 80s and 90s, and they are still very popular to this day. But when the trend started to change in the 90s, Metal Hammer and Kerrang! didn't stand up for metal. Instead they put grunge, groove and new metal bands on their covers. And these publications are hardly ever called out for it. I mean, when you call your magazine Metal Hammer, I think you should promote metal and support it to some degree. Not just ditch it when something new comes along. And I don't really read these magazines no more, because I think they are utter garbage. And they don't really care about metal unless it sells. And it's quite shocking that these magazines are still so popular, even to this day when they promote all kinds of crap from Slipknot to Marilyn Manson and My Chemical Romance. And they're still doing it to this day. They don't support modern day metal bands like Visigoth, Gatekeeper, Atlantean Codex or Helvetets Put. Instead they put rather mediocre bands like Ghost on the cover. And Kerrang, Metal Hammer and similar magazines were one of the reasons why metal died in the 90s. And the seventh reason why metal died in the 90s was lineup changes. And two in particular, Judas Priest was one of the biggest bands of the 80s and Painkiller was a great start to the new decade. But in 92 Rob Halford decided to leave Judas Priest to start a solo career. And this was of course a big blow to the band. And in 93 Bruce Dickinson of Iron Maiden did the same. He left to start his own solo career. So two of the most popular heavy metal bands of the 80s stood there without vocalists. And Black Sabbath was fronted by Tony Martin throughout the most of the 90s, except for a short return of Ronnie James Dio in 92. And don't get me wrong, Tony Martin is an excellent vocalist, but he wasn't as popular as Ozzy or even Dio for that matter. And the eighth reason why metal died in the 90s was technological advances. Let's take the CD for example. 1991 was the first year when the CD outsold the vinyl record. And this was a big leap in how we consumed our music. And in the early 90s, CD players and CDs were still quite expensive. And maybe this wasn't that significant to the death of metal, but it was a big leap and maybe it hurt the record sales a bit. And in the 90s, bands started to record their albums digitally instead of in an analog way. And Pro Tools and Logic were software that were used to record the band's music. And with this digitalization of metal, it was easy to remove small errors. And that sterilized the music to some degree. Errors and small things that made the music feel more alive was sandpapered away. And in the 90s we started to see more and more examples of drum machines that replaced real drumming. And in my opinion, the way that metal albums were produced in the 90s was a decline from how things were made in the 80s. And maybe these productions freed up more studio time for other bands. But I think that most people here on my channel would probably agree with me when I say that a typical 80s production beats a typical 90s production any day of the week. And the ninth reason why metal died in the 90s is a bit controversial, but hear me out. Because the ninth reason was Pantera. And I know that some metal fans claim that Pantera kept metal alive during the 90s. Because they were one of the few metal bands in the 90s that reached some type of mainstream success. And I'm not saying anything about their popularity. And I'm myself at that age that I remember their rise in the 90s when they shifted from being a heavy slash glam metal band to becoming one of the best selling artists of the 90s. But the reason why I think that they were one of the reasons why metal died in the 90s was because how much they influenced metal. Pantera originated a new style in metal known as groove metal, sorry exorder. And this type of metal focused more on heavy rhythms than speed. And uh, Phil Anselmo traded his Halford style falsetto for a more hardcore style type of vocals. And the Dimebag's guitar tone was dry and lifeless. And I also think that the lyrics were dumbed down with a more frequent use of the F word instead of any sort of finesse. 
So even though Pantera was popular, they nudged metal in the wrong direction, which in the long run led to its demise. With riffs that focused more on heaviness than speed and technical abilities, there was also a decrease of guitar solos and singing was replaced with shouting and screaming. And I also think that the lyrical subject matters were dumbed down in the 90s, with less lyrics focusing on fantasy, sci-fi or mythology for that matter. And more and more songs dealt with depression, hate, life and death. And uh, all this tough guy posturing with singers yelling the F word in every other sentence, that started with Pantera as well. And uh, Pantera's new brand of metal was very influential, they inspired White Zombie, Machine Head, Skin Lab, but also a band like Sepultura. And there would have been no new metal without crude metal, so in my opinion Pantera was the start of the decline of metal in the 90s. But I know that this is somewhat controversial in the realm of metal, mainly because of their popularity. And the tenth reason why metal died in the 90s was new metal. And new metal was a genre that included rapping, scratching and occasional DJs. And bands like Linkin Park, Limp Bizkit, Rage Against the Machine, Kid Rock and Korn played this type of metal. And the new metal started to grow in popularity around 93 and towards the end of the 90s it was one of the best selling genres in rock. Personally, I can't stand this genre, so I'm glad that it went out of style. But back in the 90s, this was what most kids listened to. And I think metal got its revival during the late 90s when Ozzy Osbourne returned to Black Sabbath, and Bruce Dickinson returned to Iron Maiden a year later. And in the early 2000s, Rob Halford also returned to Judas Priest. And the thrash metal got its revival with the Thrash of the Titans concert, a benefit concert that made Exodus, Heathen and Death Angel reunite. And in Germany, Destruction, Sodom and Creator all got back on track in around 2001. And now I want to hear your opinions on this. Do you agree with me that these are the 10 reasons why metal died in the 90s? Or did I miss anything or are you one of those that think that metal never died? And if you found this video interesting, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new. And if you're a Pantera fan, feel free to hit that dislike button. <laughs> and if you want to contribute to these videos and discuss all things metal, make sure to join my Discord server. Or why not check out my Facebook group or my Spotify playlists. Links can be found down in the description below. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.